All right, welcome to a new video. Today we are honing the cylinders of the 4AG and uh, first of all we are checking if the cylinders are within round. If you want to know the how to measure the piston to wall clearance, um, I showed that in the previous video on how I was analyzing the block and today we are just looking at if the bore is still uh, round. So we are taking our measurement here and we are zeroing it out on the widest point. That is our zero mark and I'm measuring basically about one inch or so or two to three centimeters under the top of the cylinder liner and we have zero here. If we would have for example worn cylinder wall um, the wall would go for example like this kind of like an egg shape uh, which you don't want or it would be for example in this direction it would be wider than in this direction so it would be out of round so we can always uh, we can check all of these things first of all I'm going to check if it is still round so I'm going to turn it now you can see it but uh, I'm going to tell you how much it is out of round it is 0 0.005 or 0 0.02 millimeters, so like a two thousandth of a millimeter, which is basically nothing. You have to consider now that there is no head on the block, it's going to be distorted in a way anyway, so it, that minimal of a difference doesn't make any, any, yeah, well, it doesn't change anything. Then we're going to go down a bit in the block and see how it is there. And we can see it is basically zero as well here. And measuring in the other direction, so 90 degrees turned, it's the same here. And then we are going further down in the block, doing the same thing, and it is also pretty close to zero. And that's how you measure if your bores are still round or if they are out of round or however they are worn. Looking at this, obviously the most wear you are going to have is from this side to this side as the piston is rocking back and forth. You will not have any from left to right, but we still want to measure it as the cylinder might be um, overly shaped, which is also not a good thing. Here for example we can see that the cylinder in this case on the like right at the bottom is a bit tighter which is only like one or like 0 0.01 millimeters but that doesn't change much um, but still something to note here. that's in both directions ah okay And this cylinder, for example, is worn a bit more than the others. It is actually three hundredths of a millimeter worn. Yep. Which, to be honest, isn't terrible, but uh, three hundredths is already something where it's at the border of uh, wear um, because the piston to wall clearance will be for example instead of uh, 0 0.04 to 0 0.05 millimeters which you are aiming for in a usually in a NA application um, it would be 0 0.08 to 0 0.09 or something so that would be already relatively big and um, for example that would be a piston to wall clearance you would be looking at for a forged engine. So on cylinder number, number four, we have quite a large, uh, quite a bit of wear. Um, as I said, it's not terrible. It's probably not going to be making any noise uh, because I am using new pistons, but it's still something to note. 
So, as for going about honing the cylinders, you want to do all the machine, machine work before you measure piston rings and stuff because even a slight change in the bore diameter, um, such as when honing with uh, tools, you may reduce or may, may take off some material. As for honing, I like to use uh, these three arm hones with uh, honing stones that I have oiled up. I don't really like those flex hone brushes, although some people prefer them. I don't think they are that great. This, uh, for me, always uh, achieves the best results as for the overall look of the cross hatching. As for pressure, you want the pressure to be relatively high, but not too high. It's kind of difficult to judge if you are doing it the first time. Um, you should be able to easily push this together by hand and uh, then you can just put it into the cylinders and then hone it for like 20 to 30 seconds maybe. That's all you need. As I said, you want to do as smooth as possible of a motion to get a smooth result and uh, so that it's a cross hatching and not just you're not just uh, throwing the stones, uh, stones around in the cylinders. I will show you a before and after of the result and each time you have finished a cylinder I would recommend to re-oil the stones and then do that for the other cylinders as well. If you still have the oil squirters in, be careful not to go too deep uh, and not break them off. And obviously that should be something to look out for. Last thing you want to do is wipe down the cylinders to clean them with something well, clean because you are going to have residue from the process in there. And last thing I'm going to show you some before and after shots. 
you can also remove like uh, the um, the edges that you have on the top of the cylinders that will automatically also be removed with that process so as you can see that is the stuff that came off of the cylinder walls and also of the honing stones and with my MX-5 engine I achieved a really high compression ratio or com compression like that it worked really well and was much better after than before that's basically it as I said I'm going to show you the before and after and um, yeah see you in the next part where we uh, get the piston rings and install them on the pistons until then see you next time